Boom 97.3, there's Gary Newman with cars. I'm Mae Potts, and this rarely happens. There's Gary Newman with cars, and here's Gary Newman in the studio. Woo! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Great to have you here. Thank you very much. Thank I'm you. very excited about this. I have to tell you a story about this song. Uh, when this song came out, and it became like the huge hit that it was, my nephew, who's very close to my age, but just that bit younger, that when he got the 45, he played it incessantly. Like over and over. And I think all of us at a point in our lives when we're very young can do that with a song. Like just like as soon as it ends, just pick up the needle and put it back because it yeah. was on vinyl back then. Yeah. Just curious. Do you remember that as a kid? And what song was it for you if you did do that? Oh, it would have been Telegram Sam. Oh, is that right? T-Rex. You were like it. way cooler than we, you know. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, cool to exactly be in a Bauhaus. That. <laughs> That's a great track. It is. Yeah, I love Mark Bowling. And it was only two and a half minutes long. That song, I think. Was it? Very short. I think that I one was... I didn't even realise that. Well, because, you know what, back then, too, that was one of the things that people looked for was short songs for the radio before they got into the albums, album oh. cuts and stuff. But so I said, my Sam. first big single was 5 minutes 15, so I had, <laughs> hadn't learned the rules, had I? <laughs> That's right. So uh, we're going to actually talk about a song that you've chosen uh, to, to, you know, talk about today and, and we're going to play on vinyl because we do this every Tuesday. It's our Turntable Tuesday. And I was pretty excited to see that you picked um, an Ultravox song. Why does this song have significance for you? Well, when I first got involved in electronic music in 78, I genuinely thought I was the only person that had found it. <laughs> doing it that way, you know, mixing it with right, okay. guitar bass. I knew about a craft fucking song, but doing it that way. And so I, I went back to the record company quite arrogantly, determined and passionate about this music is going not my music but electronic music itself yeah. is going to be massive at some point and i want to be at the front end of it and won the argument and they put the album out but then i thought i really ought to look around and see if there was anything else out there and found that there was a whole world of stuff <laughs> and i was one of the last people to come across it it's so much for me being a pioneer <laughs> and one of the things i found was ultravox they were making their third album when i made my first so they were light years ahead of me they re this is the john fox version of, of ultravox when he was the singer and i fell in love with them and i went to see them all the time and J john fox became my hero and they were doing with electronic music the exact kind of thing that I wanted to do. They were, they were my blueprint. So with things like Cars and Life Fringe Electric and all my early songs, I was trying to be as good as Ultravox. Wow. And, and in my own opinion, never got anything close as good as they were. I really loved them a lot. And the song Slow Motion was the song that, that for me just stood out. But they, they'd done some, a lot of amazing mm -hmm. songs actually, but Slow Motion was the one that just had all of the parts that I wanted to try to put into my music and, and never really did, unfortunately. Oh, well, you did okay. Yeah, you I did, did fine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Not grumbling, but no. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Newman, your choice, Ultravox, slow motion right now, Turntable Tuesday with Boom 97.3. Tuesday pick from Gary Newman, who's in the studio with us right now. You know, it's interesting listening to that song and, and a lot of the stuff that goes back. And, and of course, you're going to be performing a lot of that stuff over the next few nights here in the city. Um, you know, your earlier material. Back then, I do remember when we started getting into that electronic music, there was sort of an image and it came not only from you, but from Kraftwerk and others. There was a, like a, a sort of a, I don't know, coldness or whatever in the imagery that was associated with the music. Yeah. And yeah. that seems to have, you know, it didn't take long, but eventually it sort of disappeared. But you sort of courted that for a while too, didn't you? Well, the, 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 it came out of me because the album that I became successful with was called Replicas. And that was started life as a series of short science fiction stories. And so the album, the songs and the character that I'm portraying on the cover and then took onto stage was a character from... Um, the stories and it was a machine it was a cloned mm. machine with a, with a human skin so I didn't realize that I was attaching coldness to electronic music in general right. I just thought I was fronting my album in my own little world but it did it, it, it electronic music became associated for a while with just being cold and impersonal and and that's really unfortunate because it's anything but that and I've always said you, you with a, a guitar or a piano you accept the sound that it has. You play your melodies and you express yourself that way through the tunes mm -hmm. and the, the playing of that instrument. With a synthesizer, 
or electronic music in general, you do all those things as well, but you also choose the very sound itself. So, so in my way of thinking, that makes it even more human, more personal than a conventional instrument because you don't accept the sound. You can create that as well as a melody and a tune and everything that goes with it. I think they're the most amazing things. But, but having said that, a synthesizer for me is probably only 10, 20% of the music that you hear in a record. It's, it's a very useful tool. Right. But it's a tool nonetheless. I love guitar drums and everything right. else. And now it's all software anyway, but we're sitting in front of computer screens and doing that, making all the music and so on. So it's an evolving thing, you know. So let's talk about your shows. How, do, how are they presented then for those who are maybe, you know, going to buy tickets tonight? What th can they expect on stage? Well, these are different. This, this is a very rare thing for me because I, I don't normally play old stuff much at all. Mm -hmm. When I'm touring, I'm, I'm, there'll be a new album and that's what mm -hmm. I'm pushing and, and it's all about looking forward and mm -hmm. so on. But I'm in between albums at the moment. I've got a new one coming out next year. The last one came out a year, no, mm -hmm. two years, God, three years ago now. <laughs> Time. <laughs> Time flies. Yeah. Um, so I'm in this kind of quiet period where I'm just writing, but I, I love touring. So for me, it's been a good opportunity to get out and play the old stuff that I don't usually play, which annoys people because I don't mm. play it enough. And it's sometimes seen, I think, as if I'm giving the finger a little bit to old fans that have been with me for a while and like to hear that stuff because I just don't really dwell on it too much. Right. So th this has been great. We're, we're doing three early albums, uh, Replicas and Pleasure Principle that Cars came from and one other. Uh, from 1980 and we do we do residences each night we do a different album over mm -hmm. three nights in different cities um we're just finishing north america now in in toronto we've got pleasure principle tonight an album called telecom tomorrow and then we go to britain and do it again then and then i won't see nostalgia again for another well be, be years right you know, the new album will be out and then it'll be everything will be new for the next sort of four or five years from so on. And that's the way I like it, to be honest. That's my, my biggest excitement is in the new stuff always. Now, when you do, when you say you're doing an album, because Pearl Jam was doing this on their last tour tour, they do an album, but they also do some other stuff. Are you doing any other stuff or are you being very focused on each album each night and nothing else? Uh, well, the albums are only 40, 45 minutes long because so, they're old vinyl. Right, right. <laughs> that's true, right. So you can throw in a few B-sides you're still yeah. only getting up to 55 right. minutes. So that's not enough. So right. now what we do, we, we do all of the album, all the B-sides, and then we do another six seven or eight songs from other albums but okay. but of the other two and i do f throw a few in from the very first album mm -hmm. which is before these three that we're doing yeah. uh, and then we normally end each night with one new song oh, okay. or, or recent song just to remind people that that's where i'm actually <laughs> interested <laughs> that's where i'm going so uh gary newman opera house tonight and a new album coming next year oh uh, i'm trying to get it ready for the end of this year oh, okay, but it'll probably be march february right. march next year well thanks so thanks for coming in to chat with us for turntable tuesday My and pleasure. behind the vinyl we'll have that coming up fairly soon uh to share with our listeners as well so yeah. thanks so much gary this has been great my pleasure thank you coming up another 10 in a row 70s 80s 90s we've got aerosmith to kick things off next